<clears throat> Iron Man wrap behind the end dot, brought to you by Asics, Cervelo, Pure Blonde and Cannibal Clothing. We're still up here in Switzerland, as promised, we're trying to chase some of the world's best athletes and this beautiful little young lady. <laughs> right next to me, Els Visser. Welcome to Iron Man Wrap. Thank you, Pete. It's great seeing you up here. I mean, Els, um, your journey in triathlon has been absolutely amazing. Your first triathlon was only in 2016. It Tell was. us a bit about it. Um, it was a sprint and uh, triathlon in Amsterdam. So I'm from the Netherlands and my friends um, yeah, entered the sprint triathlon. And then actually I wanted to support them. And then the week before um, they said, Els, why not like entering this race too instead of supporting us? So then I thought that like, it was only a sprint distance, so uh, why not trying it and go there and uh, yeah, have a bit of fun together. So I entered that race. Um, but uh, And you were the fourth place overall, I believe. Oh, sorry. This was like a sprint. Oh, sorry. sorry. Yeah. So this was October or September 2016. Yeah. Um, and then like I bought like all my stuff the week before, a bike, a swimsuit. Uh, I already had some running shoes. Um, and then, uh, yeah, I started the race and really enjoyed it. I had a lot of fun with my friends and actually I also like won the race, um, but it was like a really small local race and nothing serious. Um, and then the week, like after that race or actually the Monday after I was on my uh, work and I started to tell my friends about this and I was like very excited and oh, I won my, I won a, I won a, uh, a triathlon. Um, and then they started telling me about, uh, Ironman races. Um, and I never heard about like, yeah, the Ironman races. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. they showed me some videos and I thought like, this is unreal. And, um, yeah, probably I'm not ca capable of doing this. Um, but something really triggered me. So I started watching more videos and more videos. And then I thought, okay, when I wanted, I want to do a race like this, then probably this year will be like a good year for it. Um, I was doing my PhD. Um, and uh, I'm a doctor and um, during the PhD you are more flexible with your work hours so I didn't have the night shift yet or the weekend shifts um, so I thought okay when I want to race an Ironman this year yeah I have to give it a shot <coughs> and um, I entered the Ironman Switzerland July 2017 had 10 months to train for it uh, started training and slowly like my yeah my life it was like changing from maybe three times running during the week to training every day and in the end maybe twice a day um normally i had dinner with my friends every night now it was like only in the weekends and in the end it was like no friends anymore um but i really enjoyed like the whole process and i made a lot of progression i improved a lot um yeah and then i had a great race in zurich i'm in switzerland yeah, yeah, you did. And um, to win, be an Ironman champion in your home country as well, mm, yeah. that would be a very special moment it two was. years after you started. Yes, that was uh, August last year, 2018, yeah. winning Iron Maastricht. Yes. yes, so I turned professional the year before. Um, yeah, one year of full-time training. Um, and <clears> then, yeah, like my biggest dream came true at that moment. Mm. If we can just keep on the training, we will come back to your PhD, but I mean, you're training now, you're up here in um, St. Mm. Moritz, beautiful part of the world, it is. Um, very high elevation, 1800 meters. You're training with Cam Watt and the team, I mean, Cam's been part of your journey. Mm -hmm. um, I've talked to Cam many times, he's seen you from, from the start mm. to where you are now, mm. and it's been a, it's a, been a major <laughs> transition, mm. a very quick transition, mm. and I mean, coaches are important. Oh, definitely, yes, yeah. yes. and. That's because like I'm so inexperienced in the sport, so uh, it's all new for me. So I have no idea how to make my own schedule. So yeah, a coach is very important for me. Yeah, definitely. Absolutely amazing. Now you talked a little bit before about being a, um, a doctor. You've got a PhD as a doctor, but you're also a PhD as a surgeon. So you can mm. you can operate things. You operate on. You operate swim, bike, and run. Be careful, Obviously, but I mean me. your education. Wow. Mm. I mean, you're only <clears throat> late twenties, and you're you're a doctor, a surgeon already. Mm. You've achieved a lot in your life. Mm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I'm still young, and it's true that I uh, completed my medical studies. It was in 2015. And I really um, had like interest for the specialty of surgery. I really like it to um, <clears throat> yeah have like um, a practical job in the, in a hospital. So something with um, yeah surgery. I don't really like to sit too long in the books and to analyze like all the blood tests or 
um, yeah, other tests and like studying two weeks to have a diagnosis. I really like to see a patient, see like what's wrong and then help it like to cut it out and then send him home and then patient is happy, I am happy. And <laughs> Now as a doctor, what's your um, evaluation of triathletes in your mind? Are, oh. they, are, they, are they the full quid? I think there's kind of a relationship between uh, doctors and surgery in special, I think, and like triathletes. Uh, or yeah, the top sport mentality is like really hard working and you have a goal, you set a goal and do everything to get there. And it's the same with, yeah, the surgeons in the hospital. I think it's like really hard working to achieve, um, yeah, to become a surgeon. And uh, you have to give like your full life to, to get there. And now it's the same in the sport. Like, I, was, I was about to say exactly the same thing. I mean, you dedicated yourself to your education, to becoming a doctor for mm. so many years, mm. after year after year. And being a prof being any triathlete, mm -hmm. age group or pro, that's what you've got to do. You've got to dedicate yourself to achieving a goal and mm. you can do that. It's amazing. Mm. Mm. Oh, we've been talking to it. I know we didn't break it. It's all good. We're just doing an interview. Um, okay, so I mean, yeah, you're, you're a doctor, a surgeon, you're a professional trader, but I mean, we always talk about this at races. Every everyone's got a special story. I mean, you you've got a more than a special story. You've got a virtually a story of survival. Mm. Uh, many years before, five years ago, roughly, um, before you were a triathlete, you were over in Indonesia, enjoying the, the young lifestyles you do in Bali and mm -hmm. the place around Indonesia, but enjoying a very, the yeah, cheers, cheers, <laughs> let's have a break, cheers, cheers. <laughs> I love a girl that drinks beer, <laughs> absolutely fantastic, but I mean, yeah, I mean, all seriousness now, your story, um, you literally was a... A life experience. No, not not many of us. Not uh, many of us at all would mm -hmm. ever experience. Can you tell us a little bit about it? You're on a literally shipwrecked. So yeah. let's, let's hear the story. Mm -hmm. So I was in Bali for actually an internship for my studies, uh, gynecology, um, and I was there for three months. Did my internship, did some travelling, and then I had like the uh, yeah one week left, and I thought, okay, what shall I do? And I just like had my dive certificate, um, and then. I thought, okay, maybe I can make a nice boat trip um, and then, uh, yeah, we would like visit different islands and it was time to make some beautiful dives. Um, so, yeah, I decided to spend my last week on the boat uh, for a day or f and for a night trip. Um, it was from the island Lombok to Komodo and it was like really simple and basic and i was a backpacker and yeah i preferred also like to be on a simple boat instead yeah. of like all very luxury and like better on a boat like with other backpackers instead of retired people um not like <laughs> like professional triathletes <laughs> mm. <laughs> um and then um the second night i was like already like for the entire day i felt like really seasick and the water was like pretty rough <coughs> Um, and then we had to drive for eight hours to get to the next island. Um, and then I think it was about 6 p.m. and I like felt like really sick. So I thought, okay, just like try to sleep and um, take my rest and hope when I wake up tomorrow that it's like, oh yeah, a bit more calm. Um, and then, yeah, like the water or the weather became like really extreme and very high waves and there were already some windows that like broke and uh, we all got like very anxious and we asked the crew to yeah drive a bit slower but they didn't really listen to us um, and then I think about 10 p.m. 11 p.m. suddenly like we slowed down and then it didn't take long and the motor it stopped um, and then one of the crew members they uh, he came upstairs and we were all like s sleeping on a deck next to each other on like small uh, matrices um, and then he said, okay, um, there's a hole in the boat, we are making water and yeah, we are sinking. Um, you have to put your life jackets on and yeah, come downstairs. So um, you put your life jackets on, obviously, actually, you went yeah, downstairs. And I then... already had my life jacket on because I was so scared of the yes. yeah, of all the waves. Because at that stage you weren't a triathlete, obviously, you, you didn't even do much swimming no, at all. No, you know, so no, nothing. This was a, a real experience <laughs> where, you know, mm. you were literally... <clears throat> trying to survive. Yeah, trying to survive. I was actually maybe a fat student by the <laughs> yeah. time. 
Um, so once the like the, the boat literally did sink, and there yes. was you about twenty four people were literally yeah. hanging on for their lives. Yes, we were at twenty five people total, and we all tried to make contact with people on land, but all our phones were out of service. This is dark, right? Yeah, this is yeah, all yeah night, totally night dark, time, yeah. totally dark. Yes, um, and the crew they also told us that they couldn't make contact with anybody. So that was for me like my biggest fear that we were like sinking in the middle of the ocean in like a very dark night and nobody knew that we were yeah, sinking there, yeah. and the days before we didn't see like any boats um, so I thought okay yeah we're gonna sink and nobody knows that we are here and the destination would only be like three days uh, after so they wouldn't like be worried and start looking for us um, yeah and then we I think it took one more hour and then like it was a, like a really big wave coming in and we were all like smashed into the ocean and yeah <laughs> wow so all night you literally clung for your life mm. daylight came you and a, a Kiwi mm. I believe yeah true. a New Zealand um, person Gailene. decide Hayley Gailene, yeah. Gailene sorry she you both decided to swim <clears throat> Not to save your life, but to save the lives mm -hmm. of other people as well. Yes. And it was around eight hours of swimming. Yeah, it was an eight-hour swim. Uh, I was like kind of relieved when I saw with off. a life jacket too. With a so life like jacket. your head down, you like literally. Actually, we had to swim on our back because we couldn't close the the life jacket, so we had to close it like with our arms folded, and then like yeah, making neck strokes. Um, yeah, and when I saw that island, I was kind of relieved that I le at least I saw like some land because like the rest was all like ocean. Um, and I was like really, really cold during the night. And um, I was also kind of scared to, yeah, for dehydration. And I thought I'm not gonna survive a second night in the ocean. So I thought I better try to get to that island and swim there instead of waiting till I will die. And when I left swimming, I was also like kind of pretty sure that it will be my end, but then I thought I better try it instead of doing nothing. Hmm. So both of you swam during the like, to get to an island, mm -hmm. and when you got to that island, no <laughs> civilization, no, no one on nothing. the island as well. So mm. what happened from that moment on? Um, so it's raining here, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Tuck in. Um, we just arrived before sunset, so in the beginning we tried to find some water, maybe some food, um, but then we couldn't find anything and it was like all very, yeah, lots of um, yeah, rocks and um, yeah, because yeah, it started to get dark, we thought better now to find like a sheltered place where we can yeah, sleep um, instead of like trying to find yeah, water. Um, so yeah, we spent one night on the island. Um, but actually, as soon as I was on that island, I felt pretty safe um, because I was out of the water and I also knew that, <clears throat> okay, it was still like, oh, and it was also a volcanic island, so there was an erupting volcano. Oh, God. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this is an amazing yes. story. Um, but yeah, I thought, like, I'm out of the water and probably I can survive on this island for a week or two weeks, maybe even longer. Um, but I knew that I couldn't survive for uh, yeah maybe one or two more nights in the water. So yeah, I was kind of calm and I felt like really safe with Kaylin. She was yeah kind of an experienced woman and uh, like really an outdoor an outdoor yeah lots of outdoor living and I felt like pretty safe with her. And actually, she left her husband in the ocean. Oh wow! <laughs> yes. Um, but yeah, we spent the night on the island and then in the morning, um, yeah, we um, tried to find water again. Um, but then we saw a boat passing, but then yeah, it was going and gone. We started waving with the life jackets, but the boat kept going and it was gone again. And then I think, yeah, it took a few more hours and then the same boat came back. Um, and then a small rescue boat was coming off. And, we were rescued. <laughs> that is a truly, truly an amazing, mm. amazing story. I mean, it is a story of survival. Um, do you still keep in touch with Gaylene? I do, That's yes. amazing. That's yes. good. That's awesome. Yeah, so now and then I send her an email and I would love to visit her. Um, and yeah, I'm training a lot in Australia. So I hope that there will be an opportunity maybe to have a race in New Zealand and then combine it with a visit. Hmm. That That is, oh, I mean, I talked to Cam before this and a couple of other friends and it, 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 it's, it's what a movie's made of mm. potentially a movie could come out it's, 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 it's an epic tale of um, 
people having fun in Indonesia as you do, but mm -hmm. at the end of it was a, a, a test of survival. And you and Gaylene and the others, a lot of others did survive. Did Gaylene meet up with her husband? She did. Oh, yes. good news. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, all survived um, apart from two Spanish guys, and they also started to swim to the island, but they were never found back. So we don't know what happened. But hmm. now, um, just finally on that point, because I know it's, it's a hard thing to talk about, but um, you, your quote is saying, "Life is short. Hmm. Follow your dreams," hmm. and that's basically. What I'm doing what you're, right I mean, now. You're, you're not even 30 years of age. You, what you've gone through, like no one your age would have gone through, experienced something like that. So life is short, mm. and like now you're finding your dreams through Iron Man. I do, yes, yeah, and that's what I experienced when I kind of discovered that I'm kind of a talent for the sport, and I really enjoy this. And I thought, okay, I can like uh, dream of becoming an Ironman champion, but I can also like chase a dream and go for it and put my that's job amazing. on a hold and. Just give it a have go. You, oh, I, talk, I said to Cam a little while before, but have you ever thought maybe putting it on your bike or on your kit? <laughs> it's like that, 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 little, that little logo, because I think what you've gone through would mean a lot. It'd give you a lot of energy. You know, you can always touch it. I know, like mm. Caroline Stefan, for example, mm. she has Xander. Mm. There's that one word so on the street. You got a ankle. tattoo. So you've got something to, you yes. know, um, how do I say it? You've got something to. Not really the experience, but you've got something to give you the energy. Mm. You survive that, so you can do anything. Mm. Yeah. yeah, so when I have like hard moments in the race, then I try to think about, I've been like in worse situations and there's always a way to finish a race. Mm. Um, yeah, so yeah, that definitely helps. Can we just have a cheers? Okay. I can see you looking at your beer there. She's looking at a beer. And it is raining here, so if it gets a little bit blue, we're going to try to wrap it up. But you did talk about you are um, you come to Australia a lot. Mm. You're based with Cam White and the mm. team, obviously, out of Brisbane. Um, he's, he's guided you through this journey. He's got you from where you were to where you are today. Yes. And I'm sure he's going to take you to so. the next level. <laughs> what is the next level for you? Um, so I really want to be competitive with the top girls in the field um, and I know that um, I made a lot of progress in the last two years but I also realized that there's still like lots of work to do to get to the top level so that's like where I want to go. Hmm. You're an inspiration I mean when people watch this in a little while you've been you're going to be a, a major inspiration to, to triathletes you're going to be inspiration to women inspiration to people who inspires you? Um, anyone in the sport or anyone out of the sport who's mm. who's giving you the inspiration to do what you love? Mm. It's hard. Yeah, not like really. I think a person specific. Yeah. No. Is there, is there any tri talking triathlon specific? Is there any triathlete that you would so you admire I, that, or you would love to be or gives you? Not that like really someone who I want to be, but for example, uh, I think that there are some. Um, similarities between like me and for example Chrissy Wellington uh, yes. of course like she's a different level than I am but at the moment uh, <laughs> at the moment but what I do like is yeah of course she had an education as well and um, she didn't have like a huge background in the sport and out, out of a sudden she was there and she had like yeah great results and um, I don't know her but she looks like a very happy person um, well, Chrissy Wellington is one of those female athletes that never got beaten Hmm. in an Ironman race. Hmm. Yeah, he said she was one of the world's best, if not the world's best female athlete. But to have inspiration hmm. is what it's all about as well. Mm -hmm. Age group athletes need someone to inspire to, either through coaches or world champions. But yeah, it's great to see that you admire Chrissy. Hmm, I do, yeah. yeah. Well, it's getting pretty heavy rainy. You can see the footage going down. <laughs> but what a story, folks. It's uh, almost 20 minutes, but every single minute of that is something what we get a lot. I've got a lot out of it. I've learned a lot. I'm sure there's people going to be there, young athletes, age group athletes, any sport, else you're an absolute legend, mate. Mm, and I can't good. wait to see you continue on this journey. You've got a great team behind you. Mm. I know your family very much behind you, and you're going to have a lot of people following you. Well done. Thank you very much. Thank you, Pete. <laughs> there she is on Ironman Rap. Earls Visser, what a story. Please watch it. 
again and again. Share it to everyone you can. <laughs> it's not about Iron Man so much. It's not all about Iron Man. It's about a story oh, I have a of survival. Maybe they can watch where I tell my story. Tell the story. So yeah, I had a TED talk last year in October. So you can find it on YouTube. <laughs> we just got right on. Wait, did someone just fall? <laughs> oh, anyway, else it's it one more time. Very Aussie thing. You, you half Aussie. Cheers. <laughs> there it is. Els Visser, Iron Man, wrapped behind the M dot from a sunny, not wet, rainy, mm. same reds. Stay tuned. What a legend. Thank you, Els.